Hi guys, this is your captain of Good Vibes, I call me Kwan Bokes, and I'm bringing you an exclusive interview with a Grammy Award winning band. They're known as Morgan Heritage, but let's be real, Morgan Heritage has some Kenyan roots here, and we love them. They've been here for concerts, uh, we play their music a lot. They've got a brand new album, it's called The Homeland, and from the name, Africa is well represented in this one. And I decided, why not have a conversation in here straight from the horse's mouth about this new album? And I'm privileged to have three members from Morgan Heritage live with me. Hello, gentlemen. Hello, good morning. Good morning. good morning. good morning. How you doing, Peter, Mojo, Mo, uh, and Grumps? How it's it's fantastic to see you this morning. Where I am, it's in the morning, but I I can tell that you guys are in different locations. Yeah, different locations. Yeah. <laughs> Let me start with Peter. P Peter, where are you? I'm in the UK. You're in the UK. Grumps, where are you? Yeah. I'm in America. America. And uh, Mojo, where are you where are you streaming live from? Uh in the UK. Me and Peter are together uh t doing the, the promo tour for the new album. Mm -hmm. All right. So Grumps first, I just want to get this off the way. We've tried to have uh, this interview, I think, twice now. Uh, but I'm really, really grateful that we're, we're doing this because I'm, I'm a huge fan. As I'm sitting here, my heart is pounding because I'm like, oh, my God, I can't believe I'm finally having this interview. But guys, welcome, welcome. And yeah, I hope right. a lot of reggae concerts. The only one that I really look forward to is you guys. So next time you're in Nairobi, I'd love to host you on stage. Now, I want us to get right into the album. I want us to get right into it. Um, Homeland, why? Why did you choose um, to, to record an album that has a lot of African um, uh, artists and collabos and, and love? Well, beyond our relationships, as we were talking before off air, um, that we've created traveling extensively across Africa touring over the last uh, 15 years, we started to do some collaborations in 2019 that sort of made a light bulb go off and, and the, made the possibility of an album, a world music album consisting of the sounds from across Africa, meeting the sounds from Jamaica, uh, a, a reality in our mind, right? Mm -hmm. It was the concept first and, and, and then the pandemic hit. And it morphed into something that became an ode to the land of our parents, mm -hmm. you know, our ancestors in Jamaica yeah. and our ancestors in Africa. And, you know, musically, we'll take everyone on a journey culturally across all these different places. Mm. And um, I mean, I like that you've spoken about the, the relation that you have with the continent uh, over 14 years of touring across the continent and realizing that there are a lot of different sounds on, in, on this continent. Um, if you go to the West, you've got, Af you know, Afrobeats, you've got hip life, you've got high life. If you go to the South, you've got, you know, I'm a piano and different other sounds there. East Africa as well has got different sounds, including Zouk, uh, Bongo Flavor, Genge Tone. So when, as you were traveling across the continent, Continent. What are some of the sounds that felt, um, you know, uh, points of synergy for you guys? Before we get into some of the collabs that you are, what, what sounds did you hear and you said, I'm vibing with this, I'm vibing with this sound? All of them, to be honest, because it's so unique and distinct. Yeah. Um, you're one of the first journalists, probably, not, e not even because you're in Africa, because we did interviews with people in Africa and you articulated it so well. Um, all these different sounds and that is the mission that we're trying to achieve on this album is to highlight the beauty in all these different sounds when you go to the congo and you hear the seven guitars and you're in tanzania tanzania and you hear bongo flavor and uganda has its own unique sound kenya has its own unique sound yeah it it's it really takes you into the culture and the energy of the people and when we are in the west and in europe and they bundle it all up into afro beats it's kind of doing the beauty of African music a disservice. Mm. You know what I mean? Yeah. So it, it, it was a beautiful journey for us, and we hope that people can enjoy this journey by listening to the whole homeland. Now, Gramps, last year, you uh, or two years ago, I think it was last year, you dropped an album. 
and it's got some of the most amazing uh, songs, including uh, um, uh, what's that song called? The one, the woman, uh, and I absolutely oh, love her. Like woman like you, you know. And uh, there's the yeah. other one where like. Um, I, I think during COVID, the one is like, oh, 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 yeah. People like you. People like you. <laughs> I love that song. <laughs> Literally, I want to thank you for that song. Yeah. That song took me through COVID, right? I was hosting. Uh, I was hosting on radio. It was a very dull time. I mean, uh, I had to work, but most people were at home. And to just encourage people, I think I played that song every every hour. It was playing. So thank you so much for that song. Uh, and, and it was such a powerful album. Uh, very powerful welcome, album. Um, how then did you decide? As, as a maybe you Gramps you can speak about it as a as a unit as a family that's been gigging since 1994 together how do you decide now it's time for a solo album and now it's time for a group album well it's kind of the season kind of predicts it you know we kind of just wait on the universe to kind of predict that um, in 2007 I believe after the Mission in Progress album, we sat down as a family and we was like, okay, what's the challenge next? Mm. You know, as a group, we was like, okay, how do we get better? And we went on a hiatus for five years. We were trying to do seven, but people were like, man, we need another Morgan Heritage album. And we came back in 2012 and we did the album Here Come the Kings. And then after that, I think it was Strictly Roots. And then around that time, we won a Grammy, our mm. first Grammy because our plan was to, as the five of us, um, if each person in the band becomes stronger within yeah. their craft, then you would bring back something special to the band. Everyone, the band would become stronger. So this is, that wasn't my, um, the album with um, A Woman Like You wasn't my first solo album. People yeah. were like, oh, it's Graham's Gone Solo. It's just, it just was the season. Yeah. And in the pandemic, we had so much time, right? We was all sitting, waiting, trying to find toilet paper, trying to find <laughs> eggs, trying to find flour, all these things. And it was just, we were fortunate enough to, um, okay, that song was really made to comfort people. Yeah. And then out of it, you know, an album came. I just met um, a friend of mine, Johnny Reed, here in Nashville, Tennessee. Yeah. And it just kept on growing and growing. But the album... The Homeland, we were started recording that along the way and meeting different artists like the Diamond Platinums mm -hmm. and meeting the Stone Boys and meeting all these different artists along the way. And so it was really from that time we kept on meeting different artists from over the continent. And here we are and we've arrived at the Homeland. So it wasn't a special plan to say, OK, let's do a Gramps Morgan solo or let's do a Peter album. We yeah. always work with artists over the time in improving our skills and solo projects help us to do that. I'm glad you mentioned the Grammy because um, I know that, you know, um, there's always the cast of once you hit that pinnacle, a lot of people think that um, our accolades are the pinnacle. You know, if I get the Grammy, then what next, right? Mm -hmm. And maybe, Peter, you can speak about this. After winning your Grammy, in fact, first talk about the feeling of winning the Grammy. Um, but then after winning the Grammy, was there always the pressure when you're recording an album to it must be a Grammy Award nominated or Grammy Award winning? This content's got to give us more Grammys. Well, the feeling of winning the first Grammy was amazing. Um, we've never experienced that in our career until we did. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, it's, it's a great to be honored by the people your peers in, in, in whatever field of work you're doing and the Grammy Academy is it's a it's about our peers and producers, songwriters, artists, um, musicians and it, we all come together and um, show whoever we decide to be the winner the reason why we love their thing based yeah. on the category. Yeah. And you know, now that we've won a Grammy or a few, it's it's not about making an album for, oh, it's got to be a Grammy nominated. It's, we make music because we love music. And the same way we were doing the music before we won the Grammy is the same way we do it now. Mm. It's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's for ourselves. It's for the people. It's for upliftment. And that, that's the great focus about, that, that's the great thing about music. It's not like you're in this thing to achieve awards or whatever. If the awards come, we're grateful. Don't get us wrong. We're very grateful and, and appreciate um, people recognizing what we do on that level. 
but it's always been the, the 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 it's always been us making music because we love it yeah and it's music for the people and speaking of music um you have reggae music um and i remember i think it was the, the not this grammy the uh, 2021 uh and the grammy went to outside of jamaica for the best reggae album which sparks yes. a conversation about yes. reggae and how um you know um, that it, it is of course it's a sound that emanated from jamaica but has been embraced globally yes right and so you can have yes. a, a, the best album coming from outside of jamaica and this actually will segue Absolutely. into this new album that that is homeland and and we know that it's not a reggae album it is sampling sounds from you know merging sounds and we're going to talk about that how, how do you feel about this how do you feel about reggae uh, yeah moving outside of jamaica and having really strong roots everywhere moving outside of jamaica and having roots everywhere that just shows that we are musicians and artists before being um, trapped to any one genre yeah. like any musician in the world can do any genre they choose because that's what we are with musicians um, when it comes to the genre it's a, it's a choice of an artist to, to, to lock themselves to a certain genre and because we've done reggae music all our lives we are reggae music, that's what we're about um, we just feel like it's time for us to do something more that would be very memorable for our career yeah. and for our legacy and for our children's future when they, you know, become of age or older. You know, they can say our parents did this and our parents did that. Yes, reggae music is always there, but stepping outside of reggae, doing a world music album, it's very, very, it was challenging and it's very heartwarming for us to show that we can really do whatever we want when it comes to music. Love it. All right, Peter, I want us to now get into the album. Uh, of course, all that segue, um, Af Af Afrobeats, African music, in comes the Homeland album. So what what was the idea behind it? Was there is there a specific theme or it was just collecting different artists and getting into studio? It was, you know, I know that the title carries a lot of weight, but what is the theme of this album? Is there a theme? After we we figured out the direction of it, because like Mojo said earlier, when we started the album, we didn't have the direction or the plan that it would be the homeland. Yeah. But after it started taking shape, um, and we decided, okay, this is what we're going to make, and this is what we want it to be. Um, the theme was just to have our friends and peers from Jamaica represent Jamaica and our friends and peers from Africa represent Africa as we're bringing the two um, places that we consider homeland together mm. that uh, Mo Graham Sykes called the musical bridge um, where the, the, the children of the diaspora can feel free to say yes we are African but we're just born outside of Africa yeah. and the children of Africa who are born there today can say yes those are our brothers and sisters who have been scattered around the world mm. so musically we are one people and that is just to show that in our reality, we are one people. So the, the, the inspiration, the concept of the album is our oneness. And we, we, like our, my brother say, paying tribute to the homeland, which is, you know, Africa and Jamaica. Yeah. And speaking of collabos, um, there's amazing collabos. If you haven't gotten this album, guys, get it, stream it, enjoy it. It's got some amazing collabos. Let me just take you through some of the ones that I really enjoyed um, in terms of collabos. And I noticed Andy Kanzo is on two songs. <laughs> we'll unpack that. Um, yeah. But, you know, we have, uh, in terms of collabos, Wachani Kupende featuring our very own Otile Brown. How did that, how did that collabo come? Mojo, how did you get Otile on a song with you guys? So Otili, our, our the guy who runs the East African marketing for the label uh, OPP, I told him, "Yo, we need Otili Brown because our distributor was like, you got to get this kid. Mm -hmm. I know you guys want to work with Alti Soul and you worked with Wiry and all these other people, but yeah. Otili Brown, he's the kid on the black and on the block, and we, you guys love to work with new talent yeah. historically through our production, so." Mm -hmm. We reached out to him, got on a video call. His manager, Noriega, was very instrumental in making sure we got that done. And he was just so cool, so humble. Yeah. And I, I wasn't, I don't even think two days passed, right, Peter? And we, yeah. he, the vocals, and we were like, okay, this is dope. Yeah. Because he was singing in English, 
a Healy and he was just so laid back and cool. I think I think I'm gonna do man, this I could jug and it was like all right, he he really matched the tone of the song. Yeah. The love making vibe perfectly and, and he represented Kenya to the fullest. I love it. And uh, it's interesting that you mentioned uh, Wairi. I love the collabs that you've done with Wairi. In fact, when I was listening to Just a Number, one of the first questions that popped in my head is, because one of you sounded like Wairi in the song. And I was like, you know, they say when you when you get married, you start to look like each other. When you do collabs with each other, you start to sound like each other. In, in, I, I, I promise you, when I listen to Just a Number, I hear Wairi. I hear Wairi somewhere there in the, in the BGVs, um, but he's not in this album. No. 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 I found this album. Yeah, guys, go listen now again with fresh ears. You can hear, like, there's a part I'm like, whoa, whoa, and I know who's singing, but then I'm like, no. Some, somewhere there's a vocal there that sounds like Wairi. Shata Wale, of course, representing Ghana. Um, I, I had Ready featuring with Jose Chameleon and RJ the DJ. These are three countries represented in one. How hard do these collabs, how, how hard does it take to bring, to merge a sound? Because a lot of artists say, I have to be in studio for us to have the vibe, right? Uh, because you're not in the same studio, you're all in different countries recording this. Bringing three countries together on a track, Grumps, how difficult can this be? And this song ready is uh it gets you going it gets you going you're muted grams yes sorry about that well uh, for me i don't find it difficult at all with the technology that is represented today um you can be on a different planet as long as you have good wi-fi yeah and you can send a proper text message or email so it's not very difficult in today's technology. Um, the, the, the only thing that may be difficult is the time. Mm. A lot of artists is so busy that, I mean, that's one of the things that, that even made the album take so long because artists have their own thing going on and extremely busy. Mm. So that is the only thing that may become difficult. But everyone won. There was more people that wanted to be on the album. Yeah. And we had to be like, okay, wait a minute. And I think... Um, I think in the, even in the last half, like Busy Signal came on in the last half. Yeah. Even shot the wallet because we were moving. Like Mojo was like, man, we got deadlines. We got to go. We got to go. And then, but our creativity as artists just kept on going. It was like, man, I hear this. You know, yeah. I'm you're a next artist. And we had to kind of just calm down. And with the resurgence of AI, I mean, you see people are going to be able to just put up a microphone and just get Jay-Z's voice. Yeah. On, on it. So, you know, music is changing right now as we speak. So we're grateful that we came from the days of when there was a two inch and the analog sound and we're still here <laughs> making music today. <laughs> you, you, you know, I was thinking about it from night when I was doing research uh, about the interview and I was like between 1994 to 2023, there's been so many uh, technological changes in terms of how we consume your music. You'll find that some of your OG fans, the first, uh, the first time they were listening to your music was on tapes, then CDs, uh, and then now streaming. And now AI is, is imitating sounds but the authenticity of an artist cannot be replicated and um, we can see that you have a lot of col collaborations in East Africa which means and I mean the album has uh, for the audience the album has 20, it's a 20 plus track so make sure you jump on it and enjoy some of these tunes um, East Africa is, is, is home for you guys you know you've been here um, there was a time you were even talking about uh, there was a story that you guys were looking for land was that true? Absolutely. Always, I'm always looking for land. Still looking for land. We have a lot of children and have a lot of families. So <laughs> always looking for land in Africa. Um, so I want to quickly just touch on the you got to see uh, see the world. Um, is it you got to see or is it you got or see the world? Because it's or is it does double it title become, double title? Whereas. Um, and uh, just a quick one, because I do a lot of radio and I'm like, when I find a song has two titles, is it you couldn't, you're just like, however you feel it or you just couldn't decide on the, on the title of the song? Well, we, we, the, the whole thing is just saying you got to see the world. Mm. But sometimes people own titles. Yeah. So we just said, you know, for quick, 
calling of the song, you just say you got to. Mm. And then you, someone say you got what? You got to what? You got to what? Yeah. You got to see the world. So we see the world in there as well. And you guys get to see the world. East Africa is going to see the world through your eyes, through your album. Um, do you do you feel what what would you like East Africans to feel from this album? Because my focus is East Africa and the East African artists that you have. What would you like your fans to get from this album? Unity, above all, mm. interconnectivity, mm -hmm. interoperable energy and yeah. synergy, and how we were able to merge the leading sound out of Africa right now, which is Afrobeats, with the different sounds from across, not just East Africa, but from across the continent, mm -hmm. and, and, and bring that together and still make you feel that, okay, Morgan Heritage is, is, a, is a reggae artist stepping out, yeah. you know, that represents, you know, Jamaican music and reggae and dancehall, and they made sure the Caribbean was there by putting Mr. Killer from Grenada on the album to complete that mission. So above all things, Africa needs to be more connected mm. because traveling across Africa, we realized how disconnected we are as a people and the tribalism separates us. Yeah. And if we are going to become the true powerhouse mm. as a continent that we have the capability become to become like China and India, we have to unite more. Yeah. And I like that you mentioned that, uh, especially traveling across the continent. Uh, I, I I always tell people, I've been to 25 African countries. And when I think about going to, back to some of these African countries, I love, I love Africa. But the challenge is getting on a flight, flying from here maybe to Ethiopia is more expensive than flying from here to, to, to Dubai. And that's, you know, and I'm glad that you mentioned that. It's and it's difficult. Borders, visas, it can be it can be very difficult. Now, th I mean, the album is very powerful for maybe for those who are watching this uh, interview and they're like, where do I where do I listen to this? Um, where can they be able to stream the album? Boomplay, Audio Mac, um, Apple Music, Spotify yeah. and is, is listed across Africa. But Boomplay and Audio Mac are the leading streaming platforms. Yeah. So go out there. It, and if you have iTunes and you can download it, do so for those, you know, at home or abroad. Mm. And, and follow us on social media at Morgan Heritage. The links are in the bio. Mm. Um, and Morgan Heritage Official on TikTok. MorganHeritageMusic.com. And we want everyone to get ready for all our plus size ladies. We got this Boom Boom Challenge loaded <laughs> for the new single Ready feature. Uh, RJ the DJ. <laughs> You know, it's serious because <laughs> in the music videos, right? Yeah. They always go after a certain type. There's a stereotype. Yeah. A nice round bum bum, mm -hmm. you know, slim waistline. Yeah. And Gramps had this brilliant idea like, you know, we see how Lizzo is promoting body shaming and that you, you just be who you are. Yeah. Be proud of, of, of how God created you. So this boom boom challenge is all about that. And when you see the music video, uh, our, our, our two leading ladies are, are, are not the, the normal models. They come in and they take over a particular scene in the video and it's like, hey, <laughs> you can't shake it better than us. You can't do, they're doing the splits, they're yeah. doing all sorts of acrobatics. It was just amazing and so fun, full of high energy, like you said, to match the audio. We had to match that energy with the video and that gave birth on the Boom Boom Challenge. Now, since you guys are in different parts of the world, how do you prepare for, you know, a concert? Do you, do, when, when, when you, uh, of course, like now you go, you're starting the tour, will you have to meet in one city to do rehearsals? Uh, because you're clearly... Yes. Yeah. All right. I'm yeah, looking we'll forward to together that. We'll be together in the next Yeah, Peter and I are here in the UK together, mm -hmm. you know, making sure that people know about the new album for those that don't know because people work so hard these days you know and 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 it's not that they're not fans of morgan Heritage or whoever their favorite artist is yeah but sometimes it just tips people so that's why these conversations are so important and we thank you for having us and you know we'll, we'll, we'll share some content from us in rehearsal <laughs> yes <laughs>
All right, guys, I gotta end this. I appreciate you so much. I appreciate the album. I mean, it sounds, it is a labor of love. We can hear the love in it. Um, as you start your world tour, we'll be following, and right here uh, as Radio Africa and, and Kiss FM, we will be playing these uh, tunes. Maybe you can uh, send a special message to your Kenyan fans who are watching this. Legend wide, your East African fans. What would you tell them this morning? Well, to all our East African fans, Kenya, this is special for you this morning as well. We thank you for the love that you've shared with us and shown us over the years. We thank you for accepting us as a part of your community. Thank you for loving Morgan Heritage and all the music we bring. And we hope and pray that you will love this album as we show our love and appreciation for what Africa has done for us. So God bless you all. God bless you. And I love the wristband. He's got the Kenya. I mean, I, I hate to tell you this, Peter, you're a Kenyan. You're a Kenyan. That's, that's how you know always, Kenyans. I mean, always. mine isn't there, but like, I have it at home. It's on my uncle. <laughs> but gentlemen, thank you so yes, much. Uh, Gramps, I appreciate you for, you. I know you're in a different time zone right now. You should be asleep. So I know this is a labor of love that you're up. Uh, Peter and Mojo, I appreciate you um, for taking your time to speak to me this morning. Can't wait to see you. I might just travel and see you somewhere around the world. But in Kenya, I, I want to be on stage with you guys. It's <laughs> open, open invitation. We look forward to seeing you. Sis. Absolutely. Thank you so much and jobless. Blessings every time. The ancestors, the energy, the energy, the energy. Like a magnet, it a pull me. No longer can I resist the calling. Have you my spirit now?